Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. But truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We shall enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. And we shall come before his presence with a song. Amen. Please join us in singing him this morning. Alas, and did my Savior plead, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a one as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first found the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. At the cross.
cross. Amen. Thanks be to God for the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated for our prayer of invocation. Deacon Oliver Spencer shall lead us in our morning invocation. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Dear gracious and gracious and heavenly Father, mm -hmm. we woke up this morning with your spirit among us. Yeah. Dear Father, we remember your resurrection morning. Mm -hmm. Dear Father, give us, we give you praise. Mm -hmm. We ask you to come in, bless this service with your presence. Yeah. Be our God, you are our God. Mm -hmm. We yearn for you to be with us, O oh Lord, this day. Dear Lord, our hearts are all for you. Our bodies, our minds, and our soul. Mm -hmm. All for you. All for you. Lord, with your presence in us, we cannot go wrong. Mm -hmm. So we thank you, Lord, for being with us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. of reading. First Lady. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. 
Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh is, is the Shabbat of the Lord thy God. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not kill. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet together. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. You may be seated.
thanks and praises to our God. Amen. Sister Jeanette Walker shall come now for the reading of all of our announcements. Say amen as she comes. Amen. Good morning, saints. Good morning. All is well. Pray that things go accordingly and that your health is up and running well. Amen. Please remember to pray for all our sick and shut-in members, shut members and use this time of isolation to make phone calls and reach out to our brothers and sisters in Christ that we may continue to be one family. Yes. As COVID-19 is spreading and New Jersey is reinstating some restrictions, we will be prayfully monitoring the results and we will not be opening until the schools are reopened. Mm -hmm. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper immediately following the morning service outside in the parking lot. Please remember from the shopping center lot and exit, enter from the shopping center lot and exit onto Virginia Avenue. Mm -hmm. We will hold a members meeting via Zoom and conference call for this coming Tuesday, March 9th at 7 p.m. We will use the same Zoom link and phone number we use for Precepts of Life. Mm -hmm. Join us for our Precepts for the Life Lessons, Thursday at 7.30 via Zoom, by phone 646-558-8656. Meeting ID 841-8874. Two seven two eight by Zoom website or app meeting ID eight four one eight eight seven four two seven two eight. During the Lenten, Lenten season, there will be no Bible study. Instead, we will all be worshiping with the Liturgical Churches Union. Please join us every Wednesday evening at seven p.m. Also live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. All financial offerings can be submitted via United States Mail to the following address. St. Michael's Methodist Church, P.O. Box 15276, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07305, or Giblify, St. Michael's Methodist Church, or Cash App. St. Dollar Signs, St. Michael's Methodist. We thank you for this time for your announcements. We hope that all will be listened to and be disciplined that you'll be able to join us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I want you to 
make our offering appeal is Deacon Oliver Spencer. Good morning again. Good morning. Jesus is a fence all around you. Yes. Every day. Yes. Thank the Lord by giving a nice offering. Mm -hmm. Plant a seed. Give to the churches, your church, our church. We need everybody to give and keep on giving during this pandemic time where everybody's, some people are out of work and worry about where their next dime is going to come. We give 10% of that dime, give a penny to the mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. keep the mm -hmm. nine cents in your pocket and the Lord will make sure that it explodes and be tenfold. Amen. Give. Give. Love. Love. And just be responsible with what you do. Amen. And take all in. We pray to give a vibe by email or emailing your money away. Call me. I'll come and pick it up. Amen. You scared to take those snail mail? Call me. I can pick it up. Mm -hmm. You don't know my number? Call the church. We find it. We love you. We need you. And we love you and need you. Keep giving. God bless you. Amen.
God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. scripture lesson this morning is coming from the prophet Jeremiah, where we shall read in chapter 7, verses 1 through 11. That's the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 7, and we shall read from the beginning of the chapter to the end of verse 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Attend, amend your way, and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit, Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come, and stand before me in my house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Is this house which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Beloved, please turn with me to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2. Let me call your attention to the Gospel of St. John, the second chapter. Verses 13 through 22. John 2, 13 through 22. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What son showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. 
and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus has said. Beloved, this is the word of God for the people of God. Glory be to God. Beloved, it's prayer time in God's house of prayer. It's prayer time, an opportunity for us to come to the throne of grace, asking God to have mercy on our souls, asking God to have mercy on our troubled minds, asking God to have mercy as we pour out our sorrow and as we pour out our praise, a time for us to give thanks because God has been so good. Beloved, this pandemic is still real. It's still claiming the lives of those we love. It's still troubling those that we love and that we keep in our hearts and in our minds. Let's continue to pray that the light that we see at the end of the tunnel shall truly draw near. Let's continue to pray that we might learn how to live with this thing and many more of us can stop dying from this thing. Let us continue to pray that God shall continue to keep clothes on our backs and, and warmth in our homes and food on our table and money in our pockets. Let us continue to pray that we might be blessed this day. As we go to the throne of grace, feel free, no matter where you are, to get down on bended knee. Feel free, no matter where you are, to bow your head and close your eyes in humble submission as we approach the throne of grace. in the blessed name of Jesus Christ that we come before you in humble submission my God to say that you are our God and besides you we have no other you alone are our source of strength you alone are worthy of all the praise you alone are our creator whom we adore whom we honor God, we've come to magnify your holy name. God, we've come to give you perfected praise. God, we've come to open up our hearts just to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for being so good to us, always looking beyond our faults and seeing to our needs. Thank you, God, for providing our daily bread. Thank you, God, for forgiving us of all of our sins, allowing us, my God, to be clothed in righteousness, allowing us, my God, to bear the, the mark of the cross, allowing us, my God, to bear uh, the blessing of the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Oh, God, we thank you for every blessing in our lives. We Thank you for your holy word, my God. God, we've come this day that we might feast upon your holy word. So, Lord, when the preacher comes before us, allow the preacher, my God, your Holy Spirit to come through his words, your, your Holy Spirit to come through his 
body. My God, that your word might come through his mouth. Bless us, God, in Jesus' name, that we might truly this day hear a word from you. And God, we ask your blessings as we travel through this journey called life. Lord, we know that you provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So bless us, God, that we can truly and honestly and always say the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want because you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who provides for us. Lord, your word declares that a cattle on a thousand hills is yours. So we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray in a mighty way, my God, that you might continue to forgive us for every sin, for every foul word that's been spoken, for every thought that does not bring you joy, glory, and honor. God, we simply want to please you. God, we simply want to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. God, we simply want to be blessed with the desires of our heart and use us, God, in a mighty way that in seeking to learn more of your holy word, my Lord, we might seek to learn your holy will. Oh, God, Guide us in every action. Guide us in every deed. Guide us in every word. Lord, take us where you would have us to be and use us, God, the way you would want to use us. Bless us, Lord, any way you want to bless us and allow us, God, that we might show more love for one another. Oh, bless us, God, that we can even love those who curse us, that we can love those who despitefully use us, that we might even love those, God, who show us hate because we know that only love can conquer hate. So bless us, God, that we might have more love for thee. Bless us, God, that we might have more love for self. And bless us, God, that we might have more love to share one with another. Oh, God, use us in a mighty way. May we all seek to be kinder than the next one. May we all seek to be more loving than the next one. May we all seek to, to praise you harder than the next one. May we all seek to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that you so truly deserve. Lord, we know when we're loving somebody else, that's a way of worshiping you. When we're praying for somebody else, that's the way of worshiping for you. When we're sharing your holy word with one who desires to hear it, my God. That is a way of worshiping you. So bless us, God, that we might worship with our lives. That we might worship you with everything that we have. That the love and the adoration that we might have for you may shine forth like pure gold. It might be seen and evident in our character, the way we carry ourselves and the way we love your people. God, we thank you for an opportunity to praise your name. We thank you for an opportunity to come together and worship. And we thank you, Lord, for this moment of prayer. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Never, never been a time 
praise God. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the blessed name of the Holy Ghost, we have prepared a word to preach this morning. And we call it, Keep the Faith. Keep the Faith. Keep the faith. Yes, coming from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning round about verse 13, the story goes that Jesus walked into the temple and found the leaders selling oxen, sheep, and doves. And he saw the money changers, those who exchange foreign currency for Jerusalem currency, he saw them all sitting and he took some cords and made himself a whip. And he began cracking that whip as he drove them out of the temple. He not only drove out the cattle and the doves, he also drove out everybody who was selling merchandise and goods. And then he turned over the tables of the money changers and poured out all the money. And he told them, get this stuff out of here. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. I like the way John puts it where he says, my father's house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the disciples remembered the word of God, where it is written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then the leaders asked Jesus what sign he would show them to prove that he had the authority to do this. And Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. But they didn't get it. They were saying it took 46 years to build this temple. What makes Jesus think he going to raise it back up again in three days? But Christ was not talking about the Jerusalem temple. He was talking about the temple of his body. And when he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had spoken this word and they believed the word. Beloved, I propose to you today that the money changers, the sheep sellers, and those who sold goods and merchandise in the temple, they had heard the word of God which says, oppress not the stranger, oppress not the fatherless or the poor, but welcome all who come to worship the Lord in his holy temple. They heard the word, but they received it not. They heard the word, but they kept it not. The problem is, they got so involved in doing what they thought was right, in doing what they thought would please themselves, and doing whatever the group in charge said should be done, that they failed to keep the word of God. They neglected to perform the will of God, and they lost faith in the power of God. No matter what goes on in our lives, good, bad, or indifferent, we must always remember the word and always believe in the word. The sellers of merchandise and the changers of money were providing cattle and doves for the people, and the people were forced to purchase these things to make sacrifices at the temple. They had put a yoke of bondage on God's people. For those who were unable to make the payment were then unwelcomed in the temple. Those who were unable to make these payments were not welcomed in the house of prayer. God's house is to be open for all. Whosoever will, let him come. Revelation 22 says, the Holy Spirit and the bride of Christ say, come. Let those who hear the word of God say, come. And let those who thirst for the word of God come. 
Whosoever will, let them freely take of the water of life. Jesus says in Matthew 11, Come all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest from your heavy burdens. Rest from the yoke of oppression. Rest from those who would lie, cheat, and steal from you. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We connect with Christ through the word of God. And we learn of Jesus through God's word. God's word should be kept in our hearts that we sin not against him. God's word is what we should meditate upon both night and day. God's word is proclaimed in the house of God. God's house. Then it's to be a sanctuary. It is to be a place of safety and security. When one can feel safe, where one can feel safe to open up their heart and pour out all their grief, to open up their heart and pour out all their sorrow, that their heart might be filled with the praise of God, that their heart might be filled with the presence of God and filled to share the love of God. God's house is to be a house of prayer where we are all welcome to pray for ourselves, to pray for those we love, and to even pray for those who can't stand us. When one comes for worship, the last thing they need is for some joker to be up all over their back, all up on their back, just like the man they got to deal with every day at work. When one comes for worship, the last thing they need to see is some joker all up in their face, objectifying their bodies and trying to get up in their pants. We've got to be more holy than that. We've got to be more sanctified than that. We've got to be better than that. The leaders in Jerusalem were no better than that. They, 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 they needed to be whipped back into shape because they had failed to keep the word of God. Jesus says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Keep the word by leaning not into thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledging him, knowing that he will direct thy path. Keep the word and you will prosper in whatsoever you do. When Jesus drove them out of the temple, the leaders asked him to show a sign to prove that he had the power and authority to do it. That's when he said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. And again, let me say, they did not understand that he was talking about, he was not talking about Jerusalem temple, but he was talking about his body as a temple. And when he rose from the dead, when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had spoken this word. But here's the problem, beloved. When Jesus died, all hope was lost. When Jesus died, his disciples lost all their faith. When he died, they lost all their courage. And they forgot the word of God and they hid themselves indoors. When Jesus was dead, they suffered in pain and misery. They no longer prayed. Some of them began to give up on life. Some of them then began to neglect their calling from God and they went back to fishing. They had thought that he was the one to remove the yoke of oppression. They had thought he was the one to take away their guilt and their shame. They had thought that he was the one to make their lives better. And now they had no hope for salvation. But when Jesus was resurrected, that's when they believed. 
Beloved, God wants us to know today, you've got to keep the word. Don't lose the word in the midst of your trials and tribulations. Amen. Don't lose the word of God in your sorrow and your suffering. Don't lose the word of God in your pain and in your misery, but keep the word and let it minister to you that you might see the light of God's glory even in your darkest hour. Keep the word and let it encourage you even in the most dire of circumstances. And let the word of God be your strength. Keep the word and let it bring you joy. Even when your life is full of grief and things are overwhelming. Jesus says, I have given you my word that my joy might remain in you. I have given you my I have given you my word that your joy might be full. I'm trying to tell you my joy is in the word of God. My joy is in the salvation of Jesus. He is my joy. He is my glory. He is my all. He is my all in all. Amen. Jesus gave his disciples the word so that they would know that there was nothing to fret. He gave them the word so that they would know there was nothing to fear. But they had every reason to praise God and they had every reason to trust God because they knew already exactly what God would do. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of nowhere? Won't he do it? Won't he turn your midnight into day and your weeping into joy? Won't he do it? Won't he turn your mourning into dancing and your troubles into a testimony? So whenever we're going through, we, we must remember that it does nobody any good to remember the word of God after they have already been through the fire. It does nobody any good to remember the word of God after they've already been dragged through the mud. But we need the word of God in the midst of the fire. We need the word of God in the midst of the muck and the mire. In trials and tribulations, we need the word. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light upon our path. We need the word so we can see where we've been. We need the word so we can know where we're going. We need the word and we can keep the word if we only would believe the word in our hearts. You see, if you got the word in your heart, then when you're in the midst of the fire, the word is right there with with you. If you believe the word in your heart and you keep the word in your heart, then you got the word even in the midst of the stormy seas. If you keep the word in your heart, then you got the word even if you're being dragged through the mud. You got to keep the word in the midst of your circumstances. You got to keep the word in the face of oppression. You got to keep the word in the face of the devil because if you keep the word, the word will keep you because in the the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and we beheld His glory, full of grace and truth. We beheld His glory in the midst of the fire. We beheld His glory in the midst of evil. We beheld His glory when all eyes were against us. We beheld His glory when the world turns its back on us. Because when you got God, you got everything you need. If you got Jesus is more than if the whole world was against you. Jesus is the word. Keep the word in your heart. And the word will keep you. Beloved, I, the word of God is clear. We need the word. Somebody say, I need thee every hour, every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Yes. Beloved, God wants you to know the next time, because it's coming around again, the next time you find yourself in the midst of the fire where it seems like all hell 
is breaking loose all around you. Loved ones are dying. Bills are not getting paid. Work is closed. The heart is Things going on all around you and it seems like you're in the fiery furnace. That's when you need to remember the word. His disciples found themselves there. They were so afraid for their lives, they ran and hid. Some of them thought their whole life was over. They didn't know what to do. Some of them said, well, I guess this calling wasn't real. I'm going back to fishing. They forgot the word of God in the middle of their sorrow, in the middle of their suffering. But God wants you to know today. Think back about the word of, of, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they looked in the fiery furnace, there was Jesus in the midst of them. If you keep the word of God in your heart, no matter what you go through, Jesus is right there with you. It don't do you no good to after you didn't suffer, after you didn't cry, after you didn't nearly lost your mind, to then remember the word. Remember the word in the midst of your circumstances. And you can do that. When the word is in your heart. See, there are so many people that can quote scripture and verse like that. That ain't never been my gift. That ain't never been my skill. I've never been able to remember verse and scripture. But the word is in your heart. Because when it's in your heart, you don't need to just keep it in your head. When it's in your heart, you know it and you believe it and it is God's word. And God will allow you to speak his word when it needs to be heard. God will allow you to demonstrate and live out his word when somebody needs to see the word in their presence. So what God is telling us today is if you believe the word, the word will believe in you and the word will be in your heart and the word will be your bridge over troubled water. The word will be your bread when you're hungry. The word will be your water when you're thirsty. The word will be your all in all. It will be your keeper. It will be your shade. It will be your sword. It will be your buckler and your shield. The word of God will provide everything that you need if you believe the word. It don't matter what teacher comes your way. There is nobody that can make you believe what you ought to believe. That's got to come from you. That's why nobody can say who's saved and who's not. That's why nobody can say who's a Christian and who's not. That's why ain't nobody got no heaven or hell that they can put any of us into in the first place. Because the word of God says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. It don't say nothing about what you know in your mind. Don't get me wrong, you need to know it in your mind, but it first needs to be in your heart. It needs to come out of your mouth, but before it can come out of your mouth, it needs to be in your heart. And it's in your heart. When you just simply open up your mouth, open up your heart, and you pray for Jesus to come in to your heart, to make his heart your home. And beloved, this is a promise from God. Everything you go through, he will be right there, guiding you, comforting you, encouraging you, and strengthening you to make it through. So beloved, we offer Christ to you today. For anyone who is not saved, you can be saved today and God will be with you. You can be saved today and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will be with you. Everything you do, everywhere you go. We're going to say a, a short prayer before we have communion this morning. A short prayer just to say thank you, God, for the word. Then we shall pray the prayer of salvation for everyone who desires to be saved today, for everyone who desires to have their heart filled with the word of God. And when we make that prayer, 
I ask everybody who desires to be saved and everybody who is already saved to repeat that prayer with me. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the blessed name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for love. We thank you, Lord, for the trials, tribulations, troubles that have all given us a worthy testimony. They have all given us a reason to praise you. Have all given us a reason, my God, to believe your word and to trust you. So God, in the blessed name of Jesus, we pray that you might even increase our faith. That we take a step to draw near to you, knowing then, my Lord, that you shall draw near to us. Our prayer, my God, is that we shall continue to be blessed to learn the word, that we might believe the word in our hearts, and that we might keep the word even in the midst of the fiery furnace, even in the midst of stormy seas, even in the midst of the wailing and whirling winds of life. God bless us in the name of Jesus, that we might keep the word, and that the word might be a light unto our feet and a lamp upon our path. That the word might be where we find rest, where we find safety, where we find security, where we find peace. Bless us, God, that we might keep the word, that the word might keep us. In Jesus' name. Our prayer of salvation. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus is Lord. They crucified him on Calvary's cross. They crucified him on Calvary's cross. And on the third day he arose. Third day he arose. With, all With all power in his hand. I believe in my heart. I in my heart. And, I with my and I confess with my mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Lord, me of all Wash me in the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Come into my heart and make my heart your home. I renounce Satan and all his wicked ways from this day on and forevermore. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. Glory, hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. Bless the name of the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within. Bless his holy name. For our God is good, our God is worthy, and our God is truly worthy of all the praise. Amen. 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 Beloved, we are now ready to prepare for communion service. Amen. If you're watching at home and you're ready to come on, we will meet you in the us uh, in the sanctuary as soon as we serve ourselves. Amen. Amen. So you might come now if you need to travel and we will see you there. If you're staying at home or if you can carry your phone with you, stay with us as we proceed immediately now for the Lord's Supper. Amen. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. As I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun.
Amen. If you have your hymnals, the form for receiving the Lord's Supper is found in the rear on page 12. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy way, draw near with faith, and take the holy sacrament to your comfort. Devoutly kneeling, as you are all seated, let us make our humble confession to Almighty God together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and be well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, thy holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once for a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed. He took bread and break. It. 
and gave unto his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave unto them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for me, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. This is the body of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I take it and I feast upon it with faith and thanksgiving in my heart as I am grateful for my Lord and Savior. This is the blood of the precious Lamb of God. The blood that was shed to wash all my sins away. And not just mine, but the sins of the whole world. I drink it with faith and thanksgiving in my heart. And I am forever grateful, for I know it was the blood for me. Feast upon it in thy heart for thanksgiving, be it preserved thy soul and body unto everlasting life. My sister, this is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Feast upon it in thy heart for thanksgiving, be it preserved thy soul and body to everlasting life. My sister, this is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ the righteous. Peace upon it in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving, and may it preserve thy soul and body <clears throat> until everlasting night. Amen. Amen. God bless you.